welcome to Code Rush, feature of the week. So Mark, what do we got today? Rory, today I'm gonna to show you how to put a fully formatted formula inside of your source code comments. Fantastic, okay, where do we start formula. with that then? Well, um, we're gonna start with this uh, function right here uh, called solve quad. It takes an A, B, and a C. Uh, it takes gets the square root of four times A, C right there. Uh, using the quadratic equation, it then returns a tuple uh, of two different values calculated. I've got negative B plus the square root of four AC minus, or divided by two times A, and then also negative B minus the square root of four AC divided by two times A. Now- Easy for you to say. Yeah, easy for <laughs> me to say. Now, when we look at this, it does not immediately stand out as the quadratic equation, no. right? It doesn't. And what we want to do is we, we can make this code easier to read and easier to recognize if we actually put the formula out there. And, yeah. and so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, we've added some, uh, now, first of all, for this, you want to go into the Code Rush menu, which if you're in 2017 or earlier, it's going to be up on one of these top level menus here. But if you're in 2019, the version I'm in now, um, uh, Visual Studio has uh, moved the Code Rush menu into the extensions uh, menu right here. So you're going to okay. go in here, go into Options, or hit Control Shift uh, Alt O, bring up your options. Uh, you're going to come in here and search for Rich. Uh, those are our rich comments. You're gonna click there, right there. And uh, you're gonna click this checkbox right here to enable latex formula support, currently okay. in uh, beta. So we're gonna click okay there. And uh, now with that enabled, um, there are some templates we've given you as well to make this easier. So to start with a create a new formula, we just type in forward slash F if you're in uh, C sharp. And uh, that's easy to remember because F for formula and forward slash for comment. And if yep. you're in uh, VV, it's uh, the single quote followed by the letter F to, to, to do this. So easy to remember there in both languages. Um, once we're now here, uh, we can use other uh, templates as well to make this easier, or we can use LaTeX if we already know it, or you can find an online LaTeX formula uh, builder that'll uh, mm -hmm. allow you to build that interactively. Um, all of those things exist. Um, for this, I need, uh, I need, one of the things I need is I need a fraction. Uh, so I think I'll start with that because that's what this thing is. So to get a fraction, I'll do a backslash F for fraction right yep. there. Um, the numerator is going to be, it's a negative B uh, plus or uh, minus. Now plus or minus, there's a slash PM already in latex for that. So that'll give me my plus or minus right there. Um, I'm going to just hit tab to come over to my denominator. This is just divided by 2a, so I'm just going to do that, hit enter, get back sure. over here to my numerator. This is a little more complex. Uh, and now, then I need, so it's plus or minus, now I need a square root. So it's just a slash sq like this, and then space bar. And now what happens is Kodesh templates are giving you the rest of that square root, including the curly braces, which would otherwise be um, a pain to type in. And uh, because yeah. it's a shift combination on a small key, you have to find it, target it, a lot of cognitive load and what we're trying and they're to easily, they're easily forgotten as well. I mean, if you don't necessarily know that that's what you need, right. then you won't just guess that. You might have used right. some before, but I, I wouldn't have known that, for example. So the, right. the template here is helping me out, but giving me some structure. Yeah, and even though latex is beautiful, there are times when it is inconsistent with itself. And, and the cool thing mm -hmm. about these templates is when th those times occur, all we do is expand them, and then it tells us what the remaining pieces are that we need to fill in. Yeah, so, that's good. So here we are, uh, square root. Now the square root here, this is 4ac. So I can just type in 4ac like that, hit enter, and I think I'm done. I should be able to get out of here now. Um, oh, you know what wow, I want to... That's a lot nicer looking, isn't it? Uh, what I want to do is I want to say uh, x is equal to that. I want to come into the formula and say x is equal to that, right, like that, and then come back out, and then now I've got... Uh, something uh, that is recognizable. Uh, negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of 4ac uh, divided by 2a. That's right. phenomenal. I mean, we could have got a similar effect maybe by copying an image because we know we have rich, uh, sorry, rich comment support for images, but, and that works for a standard one that you maybe find on the internet. But if you didn't have or if you weren't trying to get a formula that was a standard on the internet and you had your own complex maybe fuel injection formulas or something like this, you'd have to then go and write those out 
drag them into an image, then paste them in here. With this, literally parses your formula for you and presents it in a, a standardized kind of form. It's really nice, big font, easy to read. And again, somebody who's familiar with mathematics rather than programming could be looking over your shoulder, look at that and go, yes, that's correct. Yeah, it's cool. Whereas they wouldn't necessarily understand the C sharp there. Right. The other benefit you get from it too is it's all here in the code. If it were an image, there'd be a separate image file that you'd have to yeah. check into version control. Um, uh, and Coderish's image uh, uh, embedding technology makes that super easy to do. But again, this is entirely all by itself. This is the only thing you need uh, yeah. to be able to see this image right here. Which means if you adjust your formula because new and improved version, you know, you've got an immediate reaction there instead of having to rebuild that image yet again. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very, very nice. cool. It's very cool. The other thing you can do too is let's come in here. Let's say I was uh, calculating, um, uh, let's say I, let's just create some code real quickly here, I think. Uh, I'm going to come in here and create a class. Uh, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a struct. Uh, call it a vector like this, and I'm going to give it uh, three properties here. So uh, auto implemented property, a double, uh, one is called uh, X, and uh, one is called Y, and one is called Z. Look at that duplicate line there. figures out I probably nice. wanted the Z right in there, right? <laughs> and so yep. there is my, uh, there's my vector. All right, now let's create a, a class to consume this right here. Uh, inside this class, let's create a function that calculates the uh, diagonal of a uh, uh, of a point in space, the diagonal line right here is sure. what we'll do. Uh, and so we're gonna we'll do that. And so we're gonna create a new uh, a function that returns a, a, a double, and we'll call it uh, get diagonal, like this. And uh, we're gonna pass in I think vectors on the clipboard, and uh, we'll just uh, type in uh, vec like that, or maybe v. And then now we're going to mm -hmm. come in here and then we're going to say, well, let's return. And uh, the actual code for it's going to be something like this. So math dot uh, square root uh, right there. And I'm going to take the square root of V dot X times uh, V dot X plus uh, V dot Y times V dot Y uh, plus uh, V dot Z times V dot Z. Like that, that's sure. the result. In fact, let's introduce a new uh, local for this right here. Uh, we're gonna call this, uh, uh, we're gonna call this uh, diagonal, like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna set it equal to that. And uh, then we're gonna return it, like this. And, and so there's our code, right? So now yep. let's, let's go in and let's uh, document it with the formula. So again, forward slash F to create a new formula. And now what I want to do this time, though, is I actually want to take the pieces that are in here and reference them. So I want to say diagonal is equal to and square root is a slash uh, SQ like that. And uh, then inside the square root, I'm going to just put the V dot X. And then yep. I'm going to do to square it. I'm going to do that like there. And then I'm going to uh, copy that and uh, do plus, And this is going to become V dot Y and another plus, And this is going to be V dot Z. So the distinction here is you've invented your own variables and you're referencing those real variables. Right, exactly. I can change the font if that's a little bit too big. I can bring it to, uh, what, what I, is that going to be? Is it two going to work on that? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I can do that like that. And so what's cool about this now is now in looking right there at the code, I see my variables reference, whatever yeah. those names are right there in the comment. So um, kind of cool stuff. Um, just to kind of give you a, a picture of some of the things you can do, everything that's supported in this, um, mm -hmm. there's some examples of different kinds of formulas and things like wow. that that you can create um, using this in different fields, trig, geometry, physics. Um, you can uh, also set things like that. You can also, um, yeah, and these are all comments in the source code here. Um, so the language you're using inside there, that's, that's called latex. That's the, the specification of the formula. That's right, right, yeah? Exactly. So how much of the official latex specification do we correctly support now? We support uh, a subset. I would say probably about 60% to 70%. There sure. are a, a section of them that we do not support, um, but, uh, but, but that's because this relies on an open source engine, uh, WPF Math. Uh, engine that's out there, and uh, and that engine does not yet support those yet, and so okay. it's kind of a there's a collaborative effort with the uh, open source community to uh, get this to the next level. But we do support uh, one thing I forgot to mention is we do support um, 
uh, we do support Greek letters. So, uh, for example, Ooh. if you want to so do alpha, beta, and so forth. Yeah, like alpha is dot A. Now, dot A is uh, probably going to come out. Well, I guess that's a lowercase right there. Um, and an uppercase is just the regular letter A. But some of these harder to find ones, like uh, omega dot O right there, is going to give you this, right? So you'll get that, um, yes. uh, that sort of thing. So we get those in there to see all of the, everything that we support for this. You can bring up your code templates. Uh, and for whatever language you're in, uh, you can come in here into comments and then in latex, Greek symbols are all preceded by a dot and those are in that list. And yep. uh, other symbols such as like infinity and others uh, and, and, and other um, pieces as well, like uh, caps and cups and uh, co-products, things like that. We've got limits are all wow, inside of here. there is a lot here. Yeah, so, uh, we 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 cover a lot. We don't cover everything, but this this is pretty broad. And, this is good. And these templates are note are just for the more common kinds of things you're likely to encounter with formulas. The mm -hmm. um uh there we actually support more than what the templates that we ship for this are. Sure, we just yeah. don't have templates for everything. So in fact, a lot of the ones that are up in here, uh, we don't have uh, formulas for all of, or we don't have templates for all of these. Like, I'm not sure, but I don't know if we have, do we have a vector? Let's see if we have a vector. I think we might actually. Slash V, yeah, we do have a vector. So we can type in your vector here, whatever that is, ABC or something like that, and then you'll get that out there like that, so. And to some extent, that demonstrates that, okay, Mark, even right there, you weren't certain whether the support was there, but you were able to make an intelligent guess about what the template would be. Yeah. And as it turns out, that was it. So discoverability is there to a, to quite a large degree. I think it is. And like we said, like I say, you can go out there, Put your what, what we want from you is we want you to, to turn the feature on uh, uh, if it's, it's still in beta when you're looking at this. Uh, use the formulas that you want. Get the latex in there and let us know. Is, that, is it giving you, is it useful? Is it getting you what you need? Uh, are there pieces of latex that you uh, would prioritize in terms of that we don't yet support that you'd mm -hmm. want support for? And that's it. That's this week's feature. Thanks very much, Mark. So we've, we've got f not full LaTeX support, but large degree of LaTeX support in our new formula expressions within rich comments. So you've got the ability to take any mathematical formula within that confines to express some templates that will emit it into proper LaTeX syntax within that comment. And then when you move away, just like with very many other rich comment support, CodeRush will just display your formula in a nice and concise fashion, very mathematical, very official, and very easily comprehensible. That's fantastic. We'll see you next week on Code Rush Feature of the Week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.